Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Richard, your servant and priest, whom you honoured with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exult forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Reading from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 4, verses 7 to 15. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding. This is man's grey hairs, untarnished life. This is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet people look on, uncomprehending, it does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection, his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
Is it any surprise to anybody here this afternoon that Richard, or should I say Canon Richard, organized, put together a plan for his funeral liturgy? He had chosen the hymns, the music, the readings, the liturgical color. He gave a list of people who he wanted to be involved, an unofficial list of people he didn't want to be involved. <laughs> he chose the prayers that were to be offered. He expected at least one archbishop to be here. The fact that he's got two, he'll be very pleased with. Expected a large congregation to have the knight's presence, to have his fellow priests, his close friends, family. It, does that surprise anybody? A few years ago, he shared with me, said that he'd made his will. He put together a list for the liturgy. It was not long after his brother Raymond had died. He'd gone to see the solicitor in Sidcup and called up with me. I've appointed you along with Carol as one of the executors. And he went through the list of everything. And I said, Richard, why are you telling me this? Why are you sharing me this now? And he simply said, well, you've no friends. You won't tell anybody. <laughs> he wrote a, a short note afterwards. I know you'll get this done. And I trust in you which is probably the nearest I ever got from a compliment from Richard. We celebrate, and I use those words, we celebrate the funeral of a priest, a servant of the church, a servant of God. And that must be and has to be our focus of what brings us here, what we've come to share, what we've come to pray for, to do this for Richard. We must look and we should look to Christ, the source of all priesthood. Richard is, was ordained, his chalice, his stole, the symbols of his priestly life. He's vested in the chasuble and stole that were given to him by the people of St. Lawrence's. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that at the altar, a priest acts in the person of Christ. And it is the Christ now that we must depend. We've shared a gospel that tells us to trust now in God, to not to let our hearts be troubled. But we all feel the mourn, the loss of a friend, of a colleague, of a relative, of a brother priest. When we met, he put down and showed me, you do the homily, keep it short. No eulogy. We've all sat through homilies at funerals that became a bit of a eulogy. And I make no apology today that I will touch on a little bit of his life, those memories. But it is as a priest that he lived answered that call from Christ, and as a priest, brought that message of hope. And that's what I ask today, that you share that message of hope, that belief that Richard is at peace. For those of you who knew Richard well, I'm going to ask you, how would you describe him? What springs to mind? When I was thinking about this, the first thing that came to my mind was, well, he was big. He had a presence. He had a confidence. Many people, including myself, thought he acted and appeared to be a lot older than he was. He liked things to be done well. And I can speak now from a liturgical point of view that any mass, any service, any liturgy that Richard was involved in, 
it ran smoothly. For those fellow priests who were at St. John's Seminary, and remember Richard, he was the master of ceremonies, the MC. And certainly all the masses that we served at, we benefited from Richard's guidance. And I would say his passion to make sure that the liturgy was done well. He organized the service. And I know there are a few of us here received the demissive look or the sarcastic comment from Richard when something went wrong or he was looking to blame somebody. A parishioner from Sidcup sent an email on hearing of Richard's death. Father John Richard, Canon Richard, taught me how to serve Mass when I was a teenager. I will always remember his help and his presence every Sunday. It was no surprise to me or to my family when Richard became a priest. We are all proud that he had done so well. If you don't know Seminary formation usually takes about six years. And those of us who were at seminary with, with Richard, I am not speaking out of turn, or I'm not going to say anything's unfair, or should I say inaccurate, if I was to tell you that for those six years, or five years, or whatever it was with Richard, that he slept through most of the lectures at St. John's. He had a natural skill of remaining to be able to sleep upright whilst holding a pen in his hand, managing always to wake up at the appropriate moment when the lecture came to an end, look round and scribble something on his pad. I'm sure it was not a reflection on the quality of those lecturing or, the, or those who were teaching us, and I pause here deliberately. The falling asleep was probably linked to an a undiagnosed heart condition that only came to light a few weeks before, before we were to be ordained by Archbishop Kevin here in the cathedral in October 2005. Richard phoned me from the hospital to say he was in coronary care. His aortic valve was in need of repair. He was facing a very long and dare I say, dangerous operation. But from his hospital bed, apparently he phoned Archbishop Kevin to try to rearrange the ordination date. He didn't worry about me. Thankfully, Archbishop Kevin did point out to Richard that he would be the one deciding when the ordinations would be taking place and that his priority for Richard was that he should get well and recover. He was appointed to the parish in Canterbury where he combined his ministry by helping out at HMP Elmley as a, as a prison chaplain, something that he certainly enjoyed and certainly found his niche. Again, I think that presence, that routine. Now I could joke and say, well, obviously he had a, a captive congregation, but it's a hard ministry. It's not easy, it's not everybody's able to do it. But he certainly served those serving their sentence, but more importantly, he gave a good pastoral link and care to the officers, to the staff in the prison. A priest is expected to and should bring the gospel, re represent the word of God in different ways to build up the kingdom. And Richard did that. As we know, he wasn't always the most patient of people. But to his very core, to the very core, he shared, he had that sense of a God, his belief. And that's something he did try to live by and certainly identified with. I'm conscious that I shouldn't go on too long 
but I will share something with you. In his will, he left me his library of theological, theological books and commentaries. If you've ever been into to Richard's office, he has a, an extensive array of all these books, which looks very impressive. Many of them, I can tell you now, are unopened, <laughs> are unused, but they look good. Perhaps I should say something about his passion, and I've worded this properly now, his model railway, not his train set, his model railway, his military history, and his James Bond DVDs. The last film, what is it? The last film of the Bond franchise, his title, No Time to Die. Sean and his friends, they plan to go and see it. And today, well, Richard has died far too soon. His earthly work as a parishioner again from Sickup said, is finished. And he's been taken from us far too soon. But it is, the, it is to the Lord we must trust in, especially now at this challenging, difficult time when grief enters and touches our life. At the final commendation, when Richard's coffin will be blessed, will be incensed, something now that I laugh at because he practiced with me how to do this, so I won't be doing it today. You'll hear the words, you'll hear the blessing about God bestows a blessing upon Richard in this life, and they are signs of God's goodness. And that must be, and has to be, our comfort. That's what we must take away with us today, that Richard will be taken then to his place of rest, a place he chose. For a Catholic, we looked at the catechism. For the faithful, life has changed, not ended. The Tuesday before Richard died, I managed to get over to, to King's, to the hospital in Camberwell. And I was allowed to be with him for a few moments. The nurse said this, your friend is very ill. You can spend a few minutes with him. I told her I was a priest and she said, well, maybe just say a prayer for him. And a prayer can be offered and said in so many different ways. And that day, that afternoon, there were no words. It was just that feeling, that wanting, that spirit, simply saying, just be at peace. Just now be at peace. Well, that's what we've come today to share, to remember, to believe. It is hard letting someone go. And in the hardness today, we must look to our faith. We must look to see what Richard shared, what he believed. And in the letting go, we must know that he now is at peace. Let him be now at peace. God, our Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. And so, with confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Richard, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Richard, who ate the body of Christ, 
the bread of life, that he, be, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Richard, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the deceased relatives and friends of Richard, we pray and remember his mother and father, Morris and Alice, his brother Raymond, who have gone before him. We pray for all Richard's close friends and family and those he worked with, not only in the church, but those at the Romney, Hyde and Dimchurch Railway, the NatWest fraternity, and most notably the exiles of Mayfair and Stanhope Gate. We remember the parishioners of Sidcup, Canterbury, and the Cathedral Parish. May they be consoled at this time of grief. Lord, in your mercy. For all assembled here, we offer a prayer that all the faithful departed be given a place in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Through the intercession of Mary, the mother of Jesus, we pray, Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace the Lord our is Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother, Richard. Cleanse him and all the departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Richard, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith and your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. <coughs> George, St. Richard of Chichester, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Canon Richard, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Richard, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated for a moment? I'd like to extend to Richard's family and close friends our sincere condolences on his death. It has been a shock for all of us and a tremendous loss in so many different ways. There are people here from many parts of Richard's life. His life before he entered seminary, his life here in the Archdiocese, his many friends and different organizations all beautifully represented here. So to each of you who've come today, a very, very sincere thank you. I knew Richard before I came to Southwark, but we bonded through lockdown Negronis. He could, as Father John said in his beautiful homily, he, he, wasn't, he didn't suffer fools gladly, we know that. He could be like a bear with a sore head. But inside, there was a teddy bear. There was a generous heart, not least for the weakest and the poorest in this community. As one of the priests wrote to me hearing on Richard's death, it was his heart that was his ticket to heaven. Not so much in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense. So today we give thanks for his life. I'd like to thank his parents and his family and his loved ones for giving a gift to all of us and to our diocese in Richard. To you, dear friend, we say thank you. To you, dear brother, as you meet the Lord, remember us. Please stand. <coughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Richard, and now we come to that last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Richard again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of the kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in faith through Christ our Lord.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Richard in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Richard in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Richard and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Richard forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Richard to his place of rest.
because God has chosen to call our brother Richard from this life to himself, we commit his body to its resting place, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ, especially our brother Richard, and those who are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Richard, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord. Yeah. Martin.